And hypocrisy is divided into two types. Hypocrisy that is major kufr, which is known as related to aqidah, to your belief. And this is to show people that you're a Muslim, but you actually are not. You hide disbelief. You hate Islam. You hate the Muslims. You love other religions and you respect other religions more than you respect Islam. Not only that, you look down at Islam, at Sharia. You consider it barbaric. You don't love the Prophet ﷺ. Why did the Prophet sat down on, on, the, on the ground and ate? Why didn't he use a chair? Astaghfirullah. You hear some atheists, you hear some hypocrites say such things. Now this is major kufr. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, warning us from those who are hypocrites. And if you look at the Quran, it is filled with evidences, with description of the hypocrites, describing to us their characteristics. Why? It's not vague, it's crystal clear. You will know them by the tone of their voices. You can say that they do not mention Allah, do not remember Allah. They're lazy when they go to forms of worship. So many characteristics of the hypocrite. Why? Because they are far greater in danger than the enemies of Islam, of among the different religions. So if we have an army who's about to attack us, the hypocrites are more dangerous. Sheikh, the enemy has air force, they have marines, they have tanks, they have RPGs, they have guns. Yes, but you know them and you can fight them and you can defend your country, yourself and your religion. With someone standing next to you pretending to be a Muslim, you'll never know when he'll stab you in the back. And this is the most or the biggest problem. Allah says in the Quran, warning us. Again, we have to refer to the Quran. Read the Quran. Allah says, and of the people are some who say, we believe in Allah and the last day, but they are not believers. This is the testimony of Allah. They think to deceive Allah and those who believe, but they deceive not, except themselves and perceive it not. They don't know it. And the hypocrites, when they are hypocrites, they're not making a small sin that you can just brush it off your shoulder and khalas, kiss and makeup, no harm done. No, it's problematic. It is something that takes you out of the religion of Islam. Allah says in the Quran, indeed, the hypocrites will be in the lowest depths of the fire and never will you find for them a helper. Now, Houston, we have a problem. Whenever we speak about hypocrisy, do you ever, for an instance, small tiny bit, consider yourself, maybe I am a hypocrite? I, w I will not make a survey. Because if I say, okay, ho those who do, please raise your hands, everybody will raise his hand or face being a hypocrite. But the true thing is that we don't. When we speak about hypocrites, the first thing that comes to mind are uh, rulers, politicians, wealthy people, people of the media, actors and actresses, sinners, uh, uh, nightclubbers, drunkards, uh, everybody else except the one from the Arabian Peninsula. Everyone is a hypocrite except me. And this is a, pre a problem. The companions did not deal with hypocrisy like this. They were truly afraid. And this fear shoots you straight to Jannah. But if you don't have this fear, you have a problem. So, what are types? How much time? Okay. 
enough, inshallah. What are the types of this major hypocrisy that we can relate to? One, corruption in the or on earth. Any type of corruption on earth makes you a hypocrite, either a full fledged or yani, close, but no cigars. So, such as, so any type of wanting to spread sins, an advocator, an endorser of sins would be having this characteristic of hypocrite, uh, uh, hypoc hypocrisy. In the sense that we know that listening to music is haram. I play music, so what the heck? No problem. It's sinful. But if you spread it, you endorse it, you know it's haram, and you're calling people to do it, and defending it, you're in great danger. And likewise, if you open a nightclub, if you open an interest-based bank, and you spread haram transactions among the Muslims, involving them in consuming riba, Allah says, and when it is said to them, that is the hypocrites, do not cause corruption on the earth, they say, we are not but reformers. We're not spreading corruption, we are reformers. Unquestionably, it is they who are the corruptors, but they perceive it not. Number two, among the signs of people being uh, hypocrites, is that they deceive the believers and are allies of the disbelievers. And this is the story of the vast majority of Muslims who take sides with the disbelievers against the believers. Not because there's a dispute on land or on wealth or on power, but because they have devotion and allegiance to the kuffar against the Muslim. So it's religiously based. And this kind is found profoundly in the Muslim countries, in the Muslim world, from those who were brought up and educated by the disbelievers. In every country you will find molds being there waiting for the right moment, maybe after 20 years, 30 years, when they strike. So you find in most countries, the constitution is not Islam, it's not the Quran. Who did this? Muhammad, Abdullah, Ahmed, Ali, Muslim names. But where were they educated? Mm, don't ask, I won't, I won't. So Allah says, and when they meet those who believe, they say, we believe. So when they meet the believers, they claim to be believers as well. And when they are alone with their evil ones, they say, indeed, we are with you. We were mocking them. If you open the newspaper or watch news channels, you see this clearly all over the Muslim world. They enjoin evil and forbid ma'roof and righteous and virtue. Allah says the hypocrites, men and women, are from one another. They enjoin on the people al-munkar and forbid people from al-ma'roof and they close their hands from spending in the way of Allah. Of Allah. Part of their characteristics is that they always swear by Allah lying. And you can see this in their press conferences. Wallahi, wallahi, Allah knows what's in my heart. Yes, you hypocrite son of a so-and-so. Allah does, but you are a hypocrite. And this is why when someone swears a lot, when he speaks, this is condemned in the Quran. Don't use Allah's name in vain so that people would believe you. Your actions should ensure that. But when you say, Wallahi, Wallahi, there's something wrong. You probably are lying. Allah says, 
they have taken their oaths as a cover so that they averted people from the way of Allah. Part of the characteristics of hypocrites is showing off, boasting about their good deeds. And we have to make a distinction. In an hour and a half, it is time for dhuhr. So if I'm walking out and I'm going to the masjid and someone says, Sheikh, where are you going? I look down and said, I have something to do. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. What are you doing? He said, I'm hiding my good deeds. Wrong. Why is it wrong? This is fard. Fard, you do not hide. You announce. Where are you going? I'm going to the salat in the masjid. You have to announce this. In Ramadan, uh, would you go with me to here or there? So, no, no, I'm, I'm tired. Yeah, he said, I'm fasting. We're all fasting. But when it comes to voluntary deeds, this is what you should hide and not disclose only if needed with a legitimate reason. I go to the office and a friend comes and sits. I'm busy working, typing, printing, having calls, business. It's, it's working hours. And he sits there for half an hour, yawning. I feel tired. Oh, wallahi, I haven't slept. And I don't ask him, why didn't you sleep? It's none of my business. I don't have time. So he keeps on doing these things. And after half an hour, when he gives up that I don't ask him, he says, Wallahi, I'm tired because last night I prayed two, night, two hours night prayer. Tahajjud. Alhamdulillah, may Allah accept. Ya I didn't ask you, what are you doing? Are you crazy? This is showing off. And this is haram. And this is part of hypocrisy. Your deeds should be for the sake of Allah. Imam Malik ibn Anas in Medina. One of the four great Imams. He used to spend his time. Uh, do you think I have side mirrors? I can't see you. Um, he used to open the Quran in Ramadan and reads. And whenever someone comes in, he hides it with his garment. Why? So that people would not see that he spends a lot of time reading the Quran. Unlike us, when Ramadan comes, first five days, we meet and SMS everybody. I finished half of the Quran. How much did you finish? We say, huh? What's Shuzu? No, I did better than you. And people lie. I'm embarrassed. Someone is asking me, he said, uh, I read Alhamdulillah, he said, I finished the Quran. I said, I finished it two times. I lie. You're forcing me to lie. And this is show up, showing off, and this is part of what? Hypocrisy. And also part of the signs of hypocrisy is to be lazy in, forming, in, in performing forms of worship. What? Yes, hypocrites, by the way, at the time of the Prophet والسلام, used to travel for jihad. They used to accompany the Prophet in jihad. Now we don't even go to five minutes of our times because we don't want to. The hypocrites used to travel. The hypocrites used to pray in the masjid. But when they go to pray, they are a little bit lazy. So instead of going in the first rak'ah, they go in the third rak'ah or the fourth rak'ah. Or after the prayer, but they go to the masjid as described in the Quran. The hypocrites remember Allah, they say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allah akbar, but they do it seldomly, rarely. Okay, now you compare apple to apple. Do you go to jihad? Do you go to the masjid? Being enthusiastic in the first row. Do you remember Allah a lot? They used to give da'wah. This is scary for us. When we give da'wah, when we give lectures, oh, alhamdulillah, I'm exempted, tax free. I fear no nifaq on myself. I'm a da'i. No, they used to give da'wah as well. But their articulation is beautiful. What they say is very nice and uh, articulate and fluent. Yet, what's in their heart, you can detect in what they say. So this is problematic because now it could be any one of us. And no one is able to detect this except you. You have to look deep inside 
Am I fully devoted to Islam, to worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal, on purifying my aqidah? Now they say that time is almost over, but we haven't gone to part two of hypocrisy, which is the practical part. Because there is a part that takes you out of the fold of Islam, which we had mentioned, and there's a part that is practical forms of hypocrisy, which, which deals with the do's and don'ts. And this is the type that Umar asked the uh, uh, Hudayfa, may Allah be pleased with them, about. Umar was not in doubt that he's a kafir. He was doubtful that maybe he might lie, he might break a promise, he might betray something he's entrusted with, and all of these are characteristics of this practical type of hypocrisy. In a nutshell, what should we do? It's none of my business stuff, like this. it's your problem. I gave you what I have, up to you to follow or to neglect. But making the dua, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ash-shiqaqi wa nifaq Seek refuge in Allah in your sujood. That you become a form or a source of unity, not of disunity. And seek refuge in Allah from hypocrisy. Two, analyze your actions. Cleanse your heart. Fill it up. And pump Iman in it. Iman is pumped through your actions. The moment you sit back and relax. And say, um, I don't like this. I don't like that in Islam. It is part of the things that take people out of the fold of Islam. To hate something in Islam. So I come to a drunkard. And he says, Sheikh, I love whiskey. I love booze. I know it's haram. And I admit that it is haram, but I drink it. Is he a kafir and a hypocrite? What, what, did, what were we doing the whole hour? You have, to, you have to know. Is he a kafir and a hypocrite? No. He's a sinner. But when someone comes and says, I don't drink shit, alhamdulillah, and I don't do drugs. But I cannot digest the fact that something that Allah grows from the earth is haram. What's wrong in having a sniff of, her of, of cocaine or heroin or doing some crack or meth or doing some pot, smoking pot and getting high? There's nothing wrong in that. This guy is a kafir and a hypocrite? Yes, full-fledged. Because he rejected something from Islam. Sometimes the sisters fall into this. Okay, the brothers, so that they would not say discrimination, women empowerment. No, no, no. The brothers do this all the time. The brothers hate things in Islam. And they, you can and hear it. They say, oh, I don't like this. This is in the Quran. This is in the Sunnah. I don't like it. The sisters' issues are very few. But the sisters are vocal. And this is why we've learned since when we were young to say, yes, dear. Otherwise, face high heels coming and flying at your skull. So, I'm, I'm an obedient man. The sisters complain. It's not fair. Why does a man marry four? I don't like this. I don't want... And they object verbally. This takes you a little bit out of the fold of Islam, if not 100%. This is Allah's religion. Now, you don't want your husband to get married. This is legit. You do not object upon the ruling of Allah. You do not object that hijab is mandatory even when it's hot in, and humid in Kuala Lumpur. Some of the sisters say, you always say hijab is wajib. Come on and wear hijab once in summer and let me see how you do. Akhi, I'm sweating like a pig at the moment. It's air conditioned. I know how sisters feel, but this is their test from Allah Azza wa Jal. So what takes you out of hypocrisy is that you give your heart, give it the leadership of the Quran and the Sunnah, or the other way around. Give Quran and the Sunnah the leadership of your heart and let it steer it to Allah's paradise 
and Allah's pleasure. أسأل الله عز وجل أن يجيرني وإياكم من الشقاق والنفاق وأن يجعلنا من عباده الهادين المهتدين إنه ولي ذلك والقادر عليه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد